In this tutorial, you will learn how to install and configure FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server. Go to the FileZilla Pro site and purchase FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server, then download it. Confirm you agree to FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server license terms by clicking on the I agree button. Select what to install. Normally you want both the server and the administration interface to configure it. By selecting the start menu shortcuts or desktop icons, the installer will add links to the administration interface and to start or stop the server. Browse and choose where to install it or just click next and get it installed in the default location. Choose a start menu folder or enter one. FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server is installed as a Windows service and you can start it manually or automatically. The checkbox to start the server after the setup completes is selected by default. You have to set the port on which the FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server will listen to connections from the administration interface. The port used to serve client connections will be set later. Choose your administrator password and enter it. Retype it to confirm it. If you don't set a password, for security reasons you can configure only servers responding on localhost. The administration interface can be set to start automatically for every user, only for the current user, or manually. Take note of the fingerprint of the TLS certificate the server uses for administrative connections so that you can double check it later when you connect for the first time. The installation is complete, you can now start configuring FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server. If you haven't registered FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server yet, by default it invites you to register via the internet. Enter the registration key and click on the OK button, your server is now registered. To start configuring FileZilla Pro Enterprise click on Server and select Configure. First, we need to create a user. To create a user, click on the Add button, choose a name for the user and select the type of authentication. You can allow the user to access the server with or without a password, using system credentials, or even using a second factor authentication. For example, you can set slash as virtual path, associate a native path to it and set the permissions you like. Select the checkbox create native directory if it doesn't exist if you want the server to create the directory if that doesn't exist. Now you can connect to the server, for example using the FileZilla client. If you are connecting to the server from the same host, enter sftp colon double slash 127.0.0.1 in the host field, then enter the username and its password. The FileZilla client will display the SFTP server's certificate fingerprint and ask you to confirm you trust this host. Go on the server's administration panel and under protocol settings select SFTP then see if the fingerprints match. If they match click on the OK button to connect to the server, you're now connected to the SFTP server. In this video, you learned how to install FileZilla server, how to create your first user, and how to connect to the SFTP server. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to register offline FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server. If you're behind a corporate firewall that doesn't allow FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server to register, or you need to register without internet access, you might need to register offline. Launch FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server. In this case, select Create the request for offline registration. Enter your registration key and click on the OK button. Copy the registration request manually or click on the Copy to Clipboard button. Alternatively, you can store it in a file. Go to the FileZilla Pro Products Registration page clicking on the link and paste the registration request in the appropriate field. Get the confirmation code and go back to the registration dialog. Click on the close button and enter the confirmation code into the appropriate field, either pasting it manually or loading it from a file, then click on the OK button. The registration has succeeded. In this video you will learn how to set up SFTP public key authentication with FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server. In private public key authentication asymmetric keys are used to cryptographically authenticate a user. The server can securely confirm that a connecting client has the corresponding private key by using the client's public key. Users first need to create their own key pairs. If they don't have their key pair yet, tell them to use PuttyGen or SSH KeyGen to create them. The user has to communicate only the public key to you. Make sure they understand their private key must remain private and must not be disclosed to anyone. Launch FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server Administration Interface. Select Configure from the Server menu and go to the Users panel. Create a new user, then go to the Public Key tab. Click on the Set Public Key button and then, paste the key into the edit box that pops up. 
Now let's see how that works on the client. Launch FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. Click New in the Site Manager dialog box to create a new connection. Select SFTP, SSH File Transfer Protocol as the protocol. Enter the IP address or the host name of your server. Select Key File as the logon type. Now enter the username, and in the key file box enter the path for the user private key file. If everything is correct now you can connect. The unknown host key dialog is shown. You have to confirm this is correct. Note that the host key is different from the user key. The host key is used to validate the server's identity by the client, while the user key is used by the client to authenticate and log into the server. You can also choose to trust this server in future connections. Click OK to accept the host. FileZilla connects to the server with the configured key. On the right side you see your directories and files. You can also use Putty's key agent to handle your key file. To learn how, watch the video tutorial you find in the description. In this video you learned how to configure FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server to authenticate SFTP users using public key authentication. In this tutorial you will learn how to generate a TLS certificate via Let's Encrypt in the administration interface login using your credentials. Go to the server menu and select Configure. On the left click on Let's Encrypt. Check the checkbox to enable Let's Encrypt certificate generation. If you don't already have a Let's Encrypt account, you need to create it. Click on the Generate New Account button. You need to input at least one contact URL and specify which ACME protocol directory. The URL in this case must be an email address, which must begin with mail to colon. The ACME directory might be either Let's Encrypt Production, Let's Encrypt Staging or a custom one. Let's Encrypt recommends testing against their staging environment before using their production environment. Select Custom if you want to use a provider that is compatible with Let's Encrypt. Accepting Let's Encrypt terms is mandatory. Click on the link to learn more. Let's Encrypt generates your certificate. To prove that the domain name for which you are requesting the certificate is under your control you need to select a challenge method. You can either use an internal, minimal web server created on the fly by FileZilla server, or use an already running web server whose file system FileZilla server has access to. Go to Protocol Settings, FTP and FTPS, and in the Connection Security tab from the TLS Certificate top-down menu, select Use Let's Encrypt Certificate. Click on the Generate New button and enter one or more host names, then click the OK button. The internal web server must be reachable from the internet. Make sure that the IP addresses associated to your host names are properly routed to the FileZilla server. If everything works you'll get the certificate. Click the OK button to start using the new certificate. The log will show that a new certificate has been generated. In this tutorial you will learn how to manage FileZilla server network configuration. Go to the server menu and select Network Configuration Wizard. The welcome screen provides basic information about active and passive mode. The wizard will help you to configure your router and firewall to support passive mode. Set the range of ports that will be used for passive mode data connections. You can either set a custom port range or let the operating system decide. In any case you need to configure the appropriate port forwarding rules on the NAT device. Enter the host name or the IP address where the FileZilla server will be made available. For local connections leave the checkbox check to confirm the choice to use the local IP instead. Remember that to allow users to connect from the internet you need to make sure firewalls and routers are properly set. The last dialog recaps all configurations. Please double check them all. Make sure both your router and firewall are configured so that the connections can pass through. If everything looks good click on the finish button. The log will show that a new configuration has been successfully stored. If you want you can use our online FTP tester to see if everything works. Manual configuration. Actually, you can also configure FileZilla server without using the wizard. Click on the passive mode tab. The window dialog contains all configurations. To use a custom range of ports, select the use custom port range checkbox. Now enter the lower bound in the first field and the upper bound in the second one. Consider setting the range greater than the number of transfers that will take place in a 4 minutes interval. For example, the current range would be able to accommodate at least 5,000 transfers in that period of time. If you want the FileZilla server to be reachable via the internet, in the next field you need to enter its public IP address or its host name. By default, FileZilla server uses the default host for local connections. You might deselect that option to test locally your network configuration though. 
Now let's see how to connect to FileZilla server in active mode. For this part of the video, we'll use FileZilla Pro client. Make sure FileZilla server is allowed to establish outgoing connections to arbitrary ports, since it is the client deciding which port to use. Check your firewall configurations and update them if needed. Now launch FileZilla Pro to test your connection. In the settings go to FTP and select active mode. You might want to limit the number of ports to be used, by default are not limited. By default, FileZilla Pro asks the operating system for the machine's IP address. That works only if you are connected to the internet directly, without any NAT router and if the firewall allows connections on all ports greater than 1024. If you are connected to the internet via a NAT router, if you have a static IP address, select use the following IP address and enter it. If you don't have a static IP, select get external IP from the following URL and enter your dynamic IP provider or use the one provided by FileZilla Pro. Double check you open the ports in your firewall and that you set appropriate routing rules on your NAT router to forward these ports to your machine. Now you should be able to connect to the FileZilla server. In this tutorial you will learn more about FileZilla server's user types and how to use placeholders to define native paths. When you create a user, you can use the special user called system user. The system user can impersonate any user already available on the operating system. In this case you can only use system credentials to log in. System credentials consist of a username and a password of a local user. You can also select the use system credentials also for accessing files and directories checkbox to grant the user the same access privileges that are associated with their host operating system account. To enable anonymous access to your server, create a user and select do not require a password to log in. If you don't want to use the operating system's user accounts but you want users to authenticate, select the option require a password to log in. Then write the password in the next field and communicate that to the user through a secure channel. Placeholders are variables that can be used to define native paths. There are two types available. Colon H gets replaced with the absolute path corresponding to the home directory of the system user logged in. Colon U gets replaced with the name of the user logged in. It might be useful to define groups. In the example, the users belonging to the group would have slash pointing to their respective FTP home directories. In this video you learn more about FileZilla server users and how to configure them. In this tutorial you will learn how to set up a second factor authentication with FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server. First we need to create a user. Go to the server menu and select configure. The server shows you a warning to remind you that you need to pay attention to setting up native paths. Select the checkbox if you don't want to see it again. To create a user, click on the Add button. Choose a name for the user and select either require a password to log in or use system credentials to log in. Enter a password. To use a second factor authentication select use a time-based OTP. You have to either enter a secret code manually or let the server generate it for you. In this case a dialog pops up and automatically copies it into the clipboard. Don't forget to set a virtual path, for example slash and associate a native path to it. Select the checkbox create native directory if it doesn't exist, if you want the server to create the directory if that doesn't exist. Now you need to communicate the secret code to the end user using a secure channel. Now you can connect to the server, for example using the FileZilla client. Before connecting the user needs to add a new entry in their time-based one-time password generator. In the example we use the Google Authenticator app. Click on the plus sign and enter the secret code. If you are connecting to the server from the same host, enter 127.0.0.1 in the host field, then enter the username and its password. FileZilla will prompt you for the one-time password generated by Google Authenticator. Now read and enter the one-time password and click on the OK button to connect to the server. You're now connected to the FTPS server. To connect to an SFTP server you'll need to enter both the one-time password generated by Google Authenticator and the user's password in the password field, separated by a semicolon. If you are connecting to the server from the same host, enter SFTP colon double shash 127.0.0.1 in the host field, then enter the username and the OTP, a semicolon and the password. Users using a different client need to use the very same approach also for FTP and FTPS. FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server is a fast, secure and reliable file transfer server for Windows. It supports FTP, FTPS and SFTP, user impersonation, second factor authentication and much more. 
Do you need to store and share files safely? Time to get your copy of FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server. Go to FileZillaPro.com and buy it with confidence. See you in the next video.